Hello, my name is Cameron Devane, and my topic of research was alternations of generations in animals. To understand alternations of generations, one must first understand the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction occurs when two gametes combine and produce a living organism. The male sperm fertilizes the female egg and thus life begins to form. In this drawing, one can see that the male gamete or the sperm fertilizes the female's gamete, better known as the egg, in order to produce a zygote. That zygote later forms into an embryo. Asexual reproduction, on the other hand, is when the offspring arises from a single organism. Since there is no fusion of gametes, the offspring carries the same genes as the parent. We often see asexual reproduction in plants, bacteria, and archaea. This drawing shows the process of mitosis, in which one diploid cell goes through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis to create two diploid cells identical to the original cell. Certain animals, such as jellyfish and flatworms, can alternate between sexual and asexual reproduction. This process is known as metagenesis or heterogenesis. During metagenesis, a haploid sexual phase and a diploid asexual phase alternate regularly. This slide shows a drawing of a jellyfish on the left and a New Zealand flatworm on the right. To understand jellyfish reproduction, one must take note that the jellyfish life cycle contains a few distinct stages. In a fully grown adult, more commonly known as the medusa phase of a jellyfish, they can sexually reproduce by discharging sperm and eggs into the water, creating a planula. A planula is the free swimming larva with a flattened oval and solid body. The planula immediately during their larval stage will hook on to the base of a smooth rock or any similar structure such as a coastal reef. They then develop into the next stage of a jellyfish's life. The polyp. A polyp strongly resembles a sea anemone and during this stage which may last for a couple of months or upwards of years, asexual reproduction takes place. The polyp creates clones of itself in buds or strobilates into the last phase of a jellyfish, the ephyra. It is this structure that develops into the adult medusa jellyfish. The diagram below shows two adult medusa jellyfish releasing sperm and egg that form into their larva, the larva attaching to a hard surface, larva maturing into polyps, the polyps budding off, becoming ephyra, and the ephyra eventually maturing into a jellyfish. The probable reason Jellyfish go through this alternation of generation 
is to increase the population of jellyfish. Polyp and medusa alternate successfully since the polyp uses asexual reproduction to create large amounts of medusa and each medusa then sexually reproduces to form a zygote. The zygote then grows into a larva and the larva fixes itself to a surface and finally forms a new polyp. This cycle allows the, for the creation of more and more jellyfish. Since one medusa produces a polyp that in turn produces many medusa, each producing another polyp. Now the increasing number of jellyfish is not necessarily a bad outcome. Since jellyfish are food for many marine animals, such as large fish and turtles. They also provide a safe habitat for large amounts of juvenile fish in areas where they are exposed. And moreover, due to their stinging cells, they serve as protection for many forms of marine life that cannot protect themselves from being eaten by predators. The image below shows many young fish hiding inside a jellyfish. A fun fact to know is young crabs ride on the top of jellyfish in order to avoid having to swim. The flatworm method of reproduction is vastly different than that of the jellyfish. Generally speaking, all flatworms are hermaphroditic. Hermaphroditic is used to define an animal that has both male and female reproductive organ. Flatworms perform both asexual and sexual reproduction with a dominant mode varying between different species. Flatworms asexually reproduce by budding and fragmentation, also known as cloning. During fragmentation, the flatworm splits a portion of its body off that then regenerates into a new worm. Similarly, during budding, the flatworm grows an extension out of its body that becomes a new worm and separates from the original worm. Sexually, the flatworm already has both sperm and egg in its body. Therefore, it can fertilize its own egg. Another method of sexual reproduction is between physical contact of two worms when the sperm of one is absorbed into the skin of another worm. This can occur through the worms rubbing up against each other or by penis fencing, in which the flatworm uses its penis to pierce the skin of a potential mother. The image below shows two flatworms in the process of penis fencing. The ability for flatworms to reproduce in several asexual and sexual ways is extremely important since flatworms play huge roles in keeping lakes, ponds, and streams healthy by consuming protozoans, rotifers, and algae, in turn keeping populations under control. Also, through their large surface area compared to their volume, they can exchange gases like carbon dioxide, oxygen, and ammonia across bodies. Since flatworms are greatly beneficial to the environment, it is quite useful for them to be able to reproduce and create more of themselves when need be. The image shows a flatworm feasting on moss and algae on the surface of a rock. Thank you for listening, and I hope you all learned something new from this presentation.